before we put the intake manifold back on, we want to put our intake gasket on. This is just a fiber board. Same thing as your throttle body or your IAC. Originally, it did come with a metal gasket. I want to swap that out with this. These will not last as long as a metal gasket, but it also has less potential for damage. Install the side with the adhesive down because you want that to contact the intake manifold and seal up against that side. I'm supposing why there isn't sealing on both sides, I don't know. The intake manifold mount bolt spun it off and lost it down there and never to be found again but just in case you need it these are m8 1.25s now all you have to do is get these two studs on either side like so make sure that's made it up okay check the bottom and you don't want to move off those studs so Take your M8 1.25 and you can just hand tighten that down for now. That's all there is to uh, put the intake manifold back on. Now to bolt it down and hook everything back up. It's like spaghetti. So this is when labeling everything beforehand really comes into play. The fuel injector electrical harness, that's pretty much a no-brainer, right? You don't really need to label that. That's all really self-explanatory. I do have those in a video so at least I can at least bolt this down for tonight and review my previous uh, disassembly video. Now there's only one bolt for that mount and that's it. And that's a big bolt. Almost looks like a, an oil pan. That's probably going to be an M10. 9 is the grade of metal I think. Um, not the size because it's a mounting bolt for the intake manifold. That is a pretty big guy and notice that the threads don't go all the way up to the top so if you're going to try and replace that, which I will have to because it was gone, some mechanic along the way. I'm missing quite a lot of bolts. Quite a lot. So that's one good thing about working on your car is that you can replace all those bolts and fix all the crap that mechanics did wrong because you actually care about your own car more than anybody else, right? So seems like the way to do it to me. If you remember in a previous video when I was talking about the clamshell or the conch shell where that runner connects at the very bottom of here that's where that that bracket is, is supposed to connect. And there's no use in me recording that because there's no way that you're gonna be able to see that. Okay you see those two bolts right there or there's two holes the mounting bracket goes on one of those but it goes on the outside not inside on the other side it mounts and then you push your screw through this way but the the bolt that I have is not long enough to go through all the way which makes me think that this was a replacement of a longer bolt there's no sense in just sticking that through because it's not going to hold that's something I can do in the future for now I'm sure that that's going to last you know let's just say at least 50 miles or something like that before it works its way loose as long as the engine vibration is minimal all right so here's the bracket and it goes down there and it should be bolted in with another, let's just say, M10 bolt. But it's just resting on top of all this stuff. I mean, you can kind of see that hole right there. That's where it's supposed to be mounted. But instead, someone along the way put it on top of here, just resting on top. And I think that'll take the weight, so it's not really that big of a deal. But that's not the correct position. I think that should be good. As long as I can get a wrench on there and tighten it down. So that's the intake manifold bracket. I could not have done that with my old camera. <laughs> really liking this camera. It's really small. It can get into a lot of really neat little places that uh, previously couldn't. What's next? Hooking everything back up I suppose. The valve cover is ready to go back on. All I have to do is put the valve cover gasket back on, put the valve cover bolts back in, and that part is done. Engine done. Now onto the intake manifold as you can see hooking everything back up. Got my vacuum tube hooked up. This vacuum tube right here gets plugged in like right below here there's a little vacuum port so that one's pretty easy because over the life of the car the rubber hoses have a tendency to form you know into curves so you can kind of follow where the curves would go kind of thing so it makes it a lot easier. It's not really that big of a deal unless you completely take off the harness like I did. It's not a bad idea to use some anti-seize when you're putting all that back in. 
two bolts on the top. One here, one there. Just put some anti-seize on them. There's only two bolts, right? And you got three bolts on the bottom. This little camera's great, I love it. All right, so you got one there, you got one in the middle, and then you got one on the other side. All right, blow this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five bolts, plus the two washers over there, right? Now that all the bolts are connected, should be able to finally install my strut bar for the last time. 14 millimeter. Now that we have the intake manifold bolted down, uh, the EGR you get to from the other side. So now we're ready to start reinstalling. Both of the bolts that hold this bracket on are 10 millimeter. Just think guys, making progress, making progress. Now we just need our harness connectors. Up like so, and we'll put in the fuel rail. Remember what I said about how the hoses form and will help you over time? All I had to do was throw this, all I had to do was throw this EGR line back over there, and it pretty much almost lines up with the top of the EGR vacuum. Just goes about like so. Now it's all black in there, you can't really see, but that's the top of the EGR. That's the EGR vacuum. That's the right one. And here's your brake booster manifold, and that goes to the back of the manifold. It should be right there, but there's a clip. Ugh. One of those plier, plier lock clamps. Before you go trying to get the EGR fitting on, probably a good idea if you uh, do your coolant outlet first. I have a new gasket. These two are closer than those two. down in there. Recommend doing the ones on the bottom first because those are a pain in the butt. I don't even know if I'm on it. Now that we have the water outlet attached, we'll go at the EGR next. All you have to do is put a little bit of anti-seize on the thread. If you want to use a wire brush to get all some of that corrosion or rust, I would recommend doing that. And then use anti-seize and then just tighten it down. Uh, I don't have the torque specs for that, but I will post them up 